Uh, let's let's get to this quickly. So since since we are on the draft, uh, last year with the twenty fifth pick, the Knicks were able to uh, to draft Emmanuel quickly, man, out of Kentucky. The the uh, the Kentucky stable got got larger with with Emmanuel quickly in tow. We all remember the the D plus rating that CBS Sports Network <laughs> gave him, and then turned that into a meme all year after we <laughs> roasted him. But nevertheless, man, you know a- after a surprising season by all Knicks. You know, quickly was certainly part of that spark, a spark off the bench. 11.4 points per game, 39% shooting from three. Um, Al, I'll start with you, man. How, how did you look at uh, quickly season? How did you how did you reflect on quickly season? I think it was a success for a rookie, you know, for coming in, just hearing the hype that he's going to be a shooter. We saw, you know, he shot over 40% in college. He shot over 90% from the free throw line mm-hmm. in college. There wasn't really a lot of high expectations. He was taken late in the draft, right? But seeing that he was able to come in, be a spark off the bench for most of the season, just really, it was, I guess, the Knicks have never been good at drafting uh, a late round pick. And to see Emmanuel quickly just be a good late round pick and be a steal of the draft. And then for a portion of the season, be in consideration for rookie of the year. Very successful. I think that, you know, the things that you love seeing from him, obviously, is just being that spark at some point. Like, once he gets going, shooting from three, be able to shoot eight for ten from behind the arc. That's that's what you love. He helped us win some games. Very quick, able to draw fouls, pulling some. Uh, I love the game seeing where he was able to pull, uh, what is it, the, the Trey Young bag on him, just drawing fouls and Trey Young just complaining. But overall, I think it was a very successful season. You know, there's obviously games, there's obviously areas of his game that he needs to improve, being able to drive to the basket, playmaking, taking some mid-range jumpers. You know, he didn't show any of that. That's where he's going to have to expand. But as a rookie, it's very hard to see a lot of guys just come in, dominate, and be like your John Morant, you know, or be like a LaMelo Ball and just really just own that moment, be a starter, and just doing all those type of fantastic things. So for what he was able to do and just be – as a rookie instrumental for being a four seed team and helping this Knicks team, you know, come back from just being <laughs> in the bottom of the barrel, very successful for what he could do, but definitely areas I want to see him work on is playmaking, shooting some, uh, getting his mid range game going, just being that three level threat, uh, because that's really going to take him to the next level. In my opinion. Yeah, Ch- Chip, how about you? How'd you evaluate quickly season? Yeah. I mean, if you were given it a letter grade, I would say a plus. I think he exceeded, like Alex said, all expectations of a pick at his uh, late in the draft. I I was just, I think everybody so impressed with him that, and obviously the stats speak for themselves, 11 points on 40%, nearly 40% from three point. And he was just fearless. Like he loved the big moment for a rookie. You never see that kind of thing. And it's it was just impressive to watch he's and and i think he's only going to get better obviously and he's perfect obviously to play in new york perfect to play at the garden and one thing i do hope that happens alex mentioned his uh playmaking i also hope we get to see more of him and julius and rj on the court next year because i don't think we'll see him as the starter next year but when him and Julie, him and Julius and RJ played 688 possessions last year, they were plus 15 and a half points per 100 possessions mm. when those three were on the court. It's the 98th percentile of efficiency. That's an insane scoring margin when those three guys are on the court together. Basically, when those three guys played together, the Knicks were really good. So I, you just need to see more of those three guys together. And I don't know if quickly he's going to start. I don't think he will. But I think without Peyton there, who it doesn't matter who they bring in as point guard, I think we'll see more of quickly with those two guys. And that's the biggest thing next year for him to play more minutes with better players yeah. like Julius Randle and RJ Barrett. And when he does, I think we'll see that two point percentage go up because I think we'll have more room to drive. And I, yeah, I was just really impressed with everything he did last year. Uh, I think he even came along more defensively towards the end of the year. Clearly, he's easily, he's very well coachable. He really wants to learn and just a really smart player. Do- doesn't play like a rookie. And I, yeah, I, very high hopes for him in the future, I think. And I think a lot of people say this on Twitter, 
you can't box him in yet. We don't really know what his role yeah. is yet. So we don't know who what he is. Is he a point guard? Is he a scorer off the bench like Lou Williams type? We don't know. Yeah, I'm with you, man. We really don't know what his ceiling is just yet, but I, I thought he had an outstanding rookie campaign for a guy that we really didn't know what we were going to get from him. You know, this is a 25th pick in the draft. You know, a lot of these guys don't play in their first year. A lot of these guys don't don't may, might not even crack the league. I mean, quickly came in from the preseason on and just established himself as a piece that he forced Tibbs' hand. You got to play this kid. We needed it. We we knew the shooting was elite coming out of coming out of uh kentucky we we knew that and, and we knew that this team was in in desperate need of of that shooting ability but the, the way that he got his shots off um in in a veteran like way i just thought you know it was a was a big lift for this team in so many games man i remember that uh, even though they lost my favorite quickly game was the portland game the game where he dropped 31 points, he's battling Dame, he's battling uh, Anthony Simons, Knicks are down by like 25 going into the fourth, they're able to cut it down to about like three or so, quickly has 21 points in the fourth quarter, he was absolutely electric, and um, you know, that was the scoring versatility that you saw from him, his ability to draw fouls. Uh, like a veteran, you know, kind of like how Trey Young, how Harden were able to to draw those. I, I thought that was what really impressed me as well. He finished um, in the league um, non-shooting foul draw rate. I think he was in like the 90th percentile, you know, 2.2% 2 .2, uh, of his shots. And then uh, shooting foul rate, he was 8.7% uh, of his shots he was able to draw a foul on. And then, you know, I kind of thought later on in the season, he wasn't getting much of that respect from the referees, and then I also felt like teams were kind of adjusting to to that and and kind of um, you know forcing them into some some bad shots and, and some turnovers there. So you know teams made some adjustments. We'll, we'll see how he does in his second year, but overall I, I thought quickly was was definitely outstanding. Um, when Rose came, I thought having him off ball was was also something that gave us a spark. So that you know it, he. The fact that he didn't have to worry so much about facilitating for others and he can just come in and just score off of Rose's creation, I thought that definitely gave us a lift when Rose got there. And then when they had, you know, at times when they ran the three-guard lineup with Rose, Qu Quickly, and Burks, I thought that lineup was, was definitely dynamic, especially in the second half of the season, and, and that really fortified our bench. I'm with you, though, Chip. You know, seeing him out there with, with RJ and Julius will, will definitely be a plus next year. And we'll see where they go. Uh, but one of the things for, for improvement is definitely the, the intermediate game. We, we know the free throw shooting is elite. The three-point shooting is elite. But he only shot 40% from two. Yeah. And he didn't finish too well at the rim. Didn't drive enough at the rim. And, you know, it's either three-point or a floater for quickly. So you want to see him develop some sort of, you know, intermediate shot so that he's not so predictable on, on his drives. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see if he can get that. If he can get that off, then I, th I think the sky is the limit for him. And then also uh, playmaking. I definitely want to see him become a bit better for playmaking. That was all. That was always going to be his swing skill. Uh, how well he was going to be able to set his guys up and, and play make for others. Uh, we, we saw he kind of missed some reads out there over the course of the season and was a bit tunnel vision. So we'll see. We'll see if if he's able to to you know improve in those areas. Uh, I think he could be a starter. Uh, I think he could definitely be a starter, but for now, just having his uh, three-point abilities on this team is is going to do us very well, whether it's off the bench or closing. He, he can still close games, as we saw this year, so I think quickly has been a great asset for us, man. A really good absolutely. asset. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, and uh, like a fun fact, by the way, and this is going to end NBA Advanced Stats, they logged 208 jumpers that he took this season, and a 193 of those jumpers were three-pointers. So the remaining, which is 15, were mid-range. So he only took 15 wow. mid-range jumpers mm -hmm. this entire season. So he definitely that's, needs to work on that, that game. Yeah. So, this, so to the guy that was trying to compare him to Sexton, now yeah. he's, he's, he's not Sexton, not saying that he can't be, but, you know, Sexton's offensive arsenal has, has pretty much been defined. I mean, 24 points per game. It, you, you see it, and you can see it on the court. Quickly's got a ways to go there, but uh, nevertheless, he, he definitely showed, showed some promise, especially from the three-point strike, but only 15 mid-range shots total this year. That, yep. That's kind of crazy. 
And that's definitely kind of crazy. And then obviously defensively, you know, we'll, we'll see how he comes around. They, there were some times where you saw teams trying to hunt him under mismatches and, and clearly trying to take advantage of, of his lack of size, his lack of strength. And uh, so we'll, we'll see how he how he improves there. Um, I was a bit disappointed in, in, in the Hawks series. Obviously, it was playoffs and things of that nature. And he certainly gave the team a spark in game one. You know, he was shooting damn near 40 footers. Definitely had the roof blown off of MSG. But overall struggled in, in the playoffs. So he's like, like everybody else did in the series. But definitely wanted to see him take some more shots. And take a bit better shots, you know, give credit to the Hawks on, on their defense. But I also didn't think quickly um, shot the ball enough in, in that series to, to really help us get going. So we'll, we'll see what they learn from there and, and how he gets better. But Hawks series was definitely a bit of a letdown. Yeah, it definitely was. You know, I, I, I think I wish Tibbs would have used quickly a little bit more. I think he could have been a little spark just because we saw him be fearless in the regular season. I think he was a little too too tight in the rotations when we weren't that tight right uh this entire season and i think that just played that just played uh against us you know but i i, I get the kind of logic he was going for when we go with my veterans because the young guys maybe aren't ready for the moment but i still think when you're seeing what's happening where hawks are coming back in game three game four you need to just it, it's you, you got to use everything that you have on the bench you got you got to throw everyone out there especially when you know quickly can just get going at any second i wish we could have seen him more because we saw that last game of the series he started to go off mm -hmm. and it's just kind of what could have been if you played him a little bit more uh maybe you didn't need to play d rose as many minutes maybe you could have spaced the four out for julius to get more shots with rj if you put quickly out there for a little bit and just set uh d rose on the bench just a little bit longer i just wish we could have seen that yeah, I think by the time he decided to bench Peyton quickly was kind of already out of rhythm with his minutes. He just, his shot was out of whack by then. Yeah, and then I also think just defensively, man, that the way the yeah. Hawks are shredding us with, with the pick and roll, I'm just not sure. I, I, you listen, nobody nobody had an answer for it, right? It, you know, Peyton definitely obviously didn't. D. Rose obviously was getting flamed out there, and, and I don't think quickly would have fared much better. But So maybe it didn't even matter at the end of the day. Yeah. But I, from, I'm just thinking from a tip standpoint, he's still going to lean on, on us, especially his veterans, to, to try to uh, to slow down that, that high-octane offense, man. So we'll, we'll see how they, they bounce back next season. Uh, what do you guys think in the chat? On a scale of, let's say, 1 to 10, how would you rank, 1 being the worst, 10 being the, the best, how would you rank Emmanuel Quickly's rookie season? Leave a comment in the chat.